So we've talked about how an action potential is generated and then occurs and the changes in membrane potential at one small segment of an axon. We still haven't talked about how that action potential moves down an axon. Not too complicated, but I do want you to get that again. What we've graphed so far is over time, not over distance. And then there's some also important considerations with um, conduction, which is what this is called. So conducting down the, the axon, just like electrical conduction in your the wires of whatever electrical appliances. <clears throat> so action potential conduction, um, we are going to be looking at how we get not only our initial stimulus, not only our generation of our action potential, stimulus, we might have more than one stimulus, right, to actually reach a threshold to generate an action potential. Now we've got to look at how we get it down that way. This is conduction. We need to be able to get our electrical signal down that way because this is where the synapse is, where our neuron is going to talk to another neuron, a muscle cell, a gland, whatever. So this is, I think that's all I wanted to say there. Yeah, I think so. Um, so here we're going to be looking at this in terms of different segments. So assume so far we have looked at um, initial segment, initial segment or segment one, this is our axon hillock. And this is what we look so far. What occurs at segment two and segment three, which are further downstream, is the same. We have to be able to get there. So let's look at what happens, how a, a signal at initial segment causes a signal at segment two, segment three. It's pretty um, intuitive, I think, but we'll still talk about it. So here's what that looks like in terms of the kind of schematic of the membrane we've seen before. So initial segment is right here. That's going to be the segment that depolarizes first. So an action potential occurs there first. So let's just call it action potential. So the initial segment is going to depolarize to plus 30. That's an action potential. Um, that is going to cause, well, what do you think? So these ions are in here. We've got a local current still. So we can have those ions spread to the adjacent membrane Adjacent, um, adjacent region of the membrane inside the cytosol. It's gonna look like this. What's happening here? Um, so the sodium has entered. That was what happened at the initial segment and the ion spread just like with a graded potential, but it's not a graded potential um, or it, is one, but it's one that's large enough to depolarize the adjacent membrane. So segment two is depolarized. It is because action potentials all are all or none. So it's, it's going to be a big enough graded potential because that's how it works. Enough voltage gated sodium channels are open, enough sodium enters to depolarize the adjacent membrane. Otherwise, we wouldn't um, have actual potentials and, and be alive. So this segment T2 depolarizes to threshold. So let's see, in this system, yeah, let's write that down because that makes it more clear. Minus 60 millivolts is threshold. So we now have an action potential in segment two. Looks like this. I'm sorry. Yep, that's segment two. I said it right. In, in this color coordination thing, action potential is this like darkish 
this reddish dark pink. Um, rest is blue. Let's just do that. I'm going to pause so I can color code this quickly. All right, we've got color coordination here now for resting memory and potential when threshold is really reached and actual action potential, which is going to be moving down. And then the purple is also going to be at rest, um, but it's also going to be something that already had an action potential. So inactive means those voltage gated sodium channels are inactive. So this is gonna to relate to why we only can go one direction. We don't wanna go back to blue because it's not the same. We're not just set up the same as we were at, at rest. Um, we'll come back to this in a moment. Okay, so we had our action potential at segment two. As sodium channels, sodium ions enter at segment two, just like they did up here, but now we're further down the axon. We've, we've had conduction occur a little bit. That is enough to have ion spread to segment three. So the ion spread, just like we have above there, and segment three is depolarized. First the threshold, and then the full action potential is going to be generated because that's what happens after you reach threshold. Okay, so kind of makes sense, right? It's just ion currents inside the cell. And those ion currents are shown here kind of this way. In reality, when you have sodium flow in, it's going to flow both directions. So why don't we have an action potential move upstream back towards the cell body? You know why. We have our sodium channels inactive, right? This is a nice schematic that, that shows this. Um, so here is axon shown at three different time points in milliseconds. And this again, now this graph is distance along the axon. Um, so if we have an action potential, we're seeing this is like our segment one. Sodium flows in. Sodium ions flow both directions after it flows in. But an action potential can't go this way because those sodium channels, the voltage gated sodium channels upstream are inactive. So the one direction conduction, unidirectional conduction of the action potential is due to this transient inactivation of the sodium channels. Even though sodium ions actually diffuse passively in both directions. Um, so that's occurring again here. Here's our segment two, like we had in the previous picture. But segment one cannot have an action potential occur. Segment three has action potential. Can't go back towards segment two. It's going to go that way only, one direction. And because this action potential is actively propagated at each of these segments, what do I mean by that? Voltage gated sodium channels open and depolarize to plus 30 millivolts at every single segment. We don't have diminishing or decreasing size of an action potential. Actively propagated is what that is. It is not going to fade if we go down the axon. It is basically regenerated anew down the axon. Um, and that's why each of those graphs, like, like um, in over milliseconds, that is what's happening in every single like point along that axon, all or nothing. The other part um, about conduction, so still conduction, this is basics. We now have another factor called myelination. So if we want um, conduction to happen faster, there's two different things we can do. One is increase the diameter of the, the axon itself. So diameter um, will change flow. True with other things like water as well. Um, but we're going to be talking about myelination, which you already know what myelin is. Okay, it's insulation. 
So first, what I want to do is give you a scenario, one where we have unmyelinated neurons and no voltage-gated channels. In this scenario, we don't have propagation. So the stimulus is going to occur, and the size of voltage, that means the um, same thing as saying the change in membrane potential, the amount of depolarization, is going to decrease or decay over the length of the axon, just like a graded or a local um, potential. That's what would occur if we didn't have voltage-gated channels. This is what makes cells excitable, is to have voltage-gated channels. This is why cells other than neurons and muscle cells are not excitable, because they don't have voltage-gated channels. So throw in some voltage-gated channels. So our typical neuron um, is, does have voltage-gated cha voltage channels. This is that regeneration, propagation, because of the all or nothing due to ion flow in reality in both directions, but we're gonna have propagation in one direction because of that inactivation, no decay. And that's great. And a lot of your neurons are this way, um, relatively slow, relatively. This is still pretty darn fast. So this is fine for um, many systems. Some of our neurons um, are faster even. And this is because of myelination. So this is scenario three. Not all of your neurons are myelinated. This is white matter in your brain um, and your spinal cord. It's white as well. Columns or tracts. Your nerves, peripheral nerves are also myelinated. Um, a lot of them, a lot of the, the axons in there. There are a type of motor neuron that are not myelinated. So it's kind of depending on function, evolution. We'll talk about um, that a little bit more to see some examples of unmyelinated as well. When you have myelin, this myelin sheath, right, made of either oligodendrocytes or Schwann cells, we have insulation. That's basically what, what this is. It's like insulating a, well, electric, electrical wire or water pipe that carries hot water. We are going to have basically ions can passively flow farther. Functionally, this is like they're jumping. They're jumping from this place to this place, this gap, these gaps in the sheath. These are also called nodes, gaps or nodes. The voltage change, meaning depolarization, can jump from node to node because of this insulation. Instead of ion channels opening all along here, we have to do that regeneration step less often. This is called saltatory conduction. Saltar means to jump, and we've got conduction. So this is the type of conduction that occurs um, when we have myelin. So here's my lovely myelin sheaths. Um, and in between each myelin sheath, we've got a node. These are also called nodes of Ranvier. They're gaps, gaps in the sheath. So this allows the ions to, and I'm gonna draw it out here, just realizing it's kind of weird, um, cause it, the ions are traveling only inside the, the neuron. So they're really, there is depolarization happening and there are voltage gated ion channels here, here, these are, right, voltage gated, both sodium and potassium channels. They're, those are both necessary for an, for an action potential. This is where those channels are open. So you'll see this drawn like kind of jumping from there to there. 
In reality, it's jumping inside. The neuron. So let's say we have a different color. We're going to have like jump, jump. Saltatory conduction speeds up our signal. 